Hi guys, Creative Katie Karen Virgil here and welcome to an art journal tutorial. This one's perfect for the beginners. So I am working in my repurposed recipe binder that I've turned into an art journal and I love having these pages that I can take out and muck around with and then put them back into the binder. So you know, I will put a link to the video where I show how I repurpose it and what things I consider. Now, what you see me doing here is this is the white throwaway part of the napkin, and I am using this Stampendous dot stamp, and I'm just stamping with my black archival ink. I want to use this as collage paper in the background. I really like having the black dots, and I thought, you know, Plus, you have the texture of the paint. And because this has been stained with uh, watercolor or mediums from the one that I did on the other side, I wanted to do collage. So I'm starting with collage. And these are some collage papers that I have, some gel prints, some that have used up leftover paint. I think this is on deli paper or tissue paper. I'm not even sure. And I'm just gluing this down with fluid matte medium, which I absolutely love. I buy the Liquitex Basics brand and I'm just completely happy with that. Now adding the collage, it starts your color story. It adds some texture to it. It also might give you some patterns. It'll give you the jumping off points to whatever comes next. Some of those decisions have been made for you and are going to point you in directions. Now I'm putting the napkin on. This is going to glue down a little bit different than the deli paper. Different textures, different feeling. They're all going to take different, the whatever layers that go next differently. And yes, I could have taken and stamped on that, but you would lose, you don't get the texture that the napkin gives. And if you have this already done, I don't need to drag everything out. I can just use what's available. I really did not have a plan for this page. And often when that's the case, that's when I do the collage thing. I pick pick a color and I go through my files and pick out a few items and I start. And I work things out as I go. So don't think when you start a page, you need to necessarily know exactly where it's going. I'm just adding the colors here. Because this is on deli paper, I think I used the deli paper when I did gel printing as to remove some of the paint through the stencil. This stencil is called Geonetting. And I'm using heavy gesso. Now this wasn't intended to be heavy gesso, it's just dried or thickened over time. And I'm rubbing it through the stencil. And I love doing this. It dries faster than modeling paste. It's easier to apply. I'm not attempting to get a perfect stencil. I want texture in there. Now, if you don't have heavy gesso, you can take regular gesso and mix it with modeling paste. Now, today I've got out my ink tense blocks and I am matching the colors that I already have from my collage work to my swatched out ink tense blocks. I love these in ink tense blocks and I really do need to use them more. They were one of my first mixed media pieces. They are ink and when they've been fully activated, they are permanent. So you get the effect of watercolor. They move like watercolor, but when dry, they are permanent. So here I'm just rubbing it on top of the texture areas, spraying water on it, mixing it with my fingers. No real plan.
but I'm loving the watercolor look that this is giving me. Adding a little bit of gesso, mixing that into inked into the ink tents blocks. Now the ink tents blocks, I will put a link. I did a whole series back when I started mixed media on how you can use them in a variety of ways in mixed media and art journaling. They're not an inexpensive, they're not a, a cheap craft tool. But because they are so versatile, you can definitely get your money's worth out of them. So I'll put a link to that video in there. Those videos, I think there are five of them. So it's a considerable amount of time. There's a lot of information there. So I'm just wetting, wetting it with the brush, adding, drying. And you can see how it's caught on some of the texture that's there from the heavy gesso, from the wrinkles that's in the napkin or in the de deli paper. Decide I'm going to try to put, put this through the stencil, kind of make a stamp. That didn't work so much. But I'm continuing. I'm wetting it. Lying it flat. Wetting it again. And then using it little bit like a stamp and you're getting some marks it's not exactly perfect but it is adding to it and I'm having fun and that's what it's supposed to be about I'm absolutely loving the dreamy background of what I've created here So once that's dry, I'm still wetting my finger, getting some on, and rubbing it on the high areas. It seems I won't be happy till all the white space is gone. I'm dipping my hand in water on the glass media mat and then rubbing it on the block. They now have these ink tents blocks kind of like watercolor in pans. I think that's just awesome. Because that's how I typically use it. I'm using, I'm not sure if it's white gesso or white acrylic paint, and I'm using that same geonetting stencil and adding just another layer. Now, I because I put so much on top, I lost some of the dots and I wanted to bring some of that black back. I wanted some contrast from the black, so I'm using the stamp right now. But again, some of it's way back and it's in the distant and some of it's up close. So I like having the same but different. This is a stencil that I cut with my Silhouette Cameo. And I'm just stenciling this frond on with white acrylic paint. Very, very simple. This is something you could draw out and cut out of cardboard or tag board to make your own. Now I wanted some of the other ones, some of these a little bit more opaque. So I'm putting the stencil back on and giving it another layer. And it's just a little more opaque. And the same thing here. Just adding, this one is kind of floating in the air, so I'm painting in the stem. 
and then I decide I'm going to put that stencil back on and add some leaves. And that's how easy you can change a stencil and build on it. I could have left it the way it was, but I decided that I wanted to outline it. And I'm going around with my fine line bottle. And I believe I grabbed the Prussian blue color instead of the black. And I haven't used that for a while and it thickened a little bit in the bottle. So I was having a bit of a time. My hand has been sore and I've been having, it, it was a little difficult to squeeze, but once I thinned it, it was like it should be. Would you have left it without the outlining or would you have done the outlining like I did? It's just a personal preference. There is no right or wrong answer. Now that that's done, I am using my black acrylic paint, my angle brush, and I'm floating acrylic shading around the outside edges. I could have grabbed my Inktense block in black and gone around it and activated it. Quite honestly, I didn't think of that till I'm watching this now. Typically, that's what I do. Instead of grabbing out separate different mediums, I use what's already on my desk. Because there's lots of ways of achieving the same thing. And then I'm shading a little bit on here just to add a little bit of interest. Links to the stencils that I've used here and the stamps can be found in the description box below through my affiliate links. Ninny's Napkins does carry a lot of six inch Crafters Workshop stencils. So be sure to check her site out. I'm splattering with white paint. I have just pre-mixed the white paint, thinned it a little bit, and keep it in these containers because I'm doing a lot of splattering. And it just saves time. Then I grab out my sentiment binder. And my short and sweet sentiment pack has the white lettering on a black background. And I'm thinking that's going to look really good on what I have here, because it's a light background. So I'm cutting out the one that's there that says, I'm possible. And gluing that on. If you wanna check out my sentiment packs, the link is in the description box. They are now available within, instant download at Ninny's Napkins as well. Fine line applicator, just going to go outline the page. Follow me on Instagram, at Creative Katie. Join my Facebook group, Art Journal, Art Journaling, and Mixed Media Creations. Until next time, keep creating.